Musicians Institute Guitar Craft Program, sponsor of Fox 17 Rock and Review. The Rock and Review is on the road, and we're catching up with uh, one of my favorite country artists, Whisperin' Bill Anderson. You know, I could spend most of this show just going over all of the uh, awards and everything. He's won for his songwriting, singing, obviously a Grand Ole Opry member, what, 57 years? Uh, you know, uh, Country Music Hall of Fame, and this year, uh, the Songwriters Hall of Fame, Bill. It's been quite a ride. <laughs> <laughs> and you got a brand new album coming out this Friday, and, and I know the marketing team spent a lot of time on the name. You're calling it Anderson. <laughs> well, we, we wanted to call it Garth Brooks, but that name was already taken, so... <laughs> Anderson was all that was left. I like it. So then the, the album afterwards will be Bill, right? Uh, yeah. Or Whisper or something. So. But you know, the, the new album, Bill, you know, I'm so glad you, you came out with some more new music. Last time you and I were talking, it was your last book that you came out with. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, this new album, you know, you've really teamed up with some great people. I've listened to all the tracks. My favorite is the first single with you and Jamie Johnson. Well, that was quite an experience. I love Jamie to death. You know, we go back a lot of years, back to Give It Away, which was the song of the year that we co-wrote with Buddy Cannon in 2007. And um, Jamie called me one day and said he had an idea for a song and he wanted to get together and write it. And, and it was called Everybody Wants to Be 21. And, and the idea of this song is, and it's, and it's very true in life, you know, when you're younger, when you're, you know, you're 14, you can't wait to be 16 right. to be able to drive, and then you can't wait to be 18 for all of that, and then everybody wants to be 21. And then when you've gone past 21, you think, boy, I wish I could just wind the clock back. And <laughs> everybody wants to be younger and be 21. Right. So we didn't really write the song as a, intended to be a duet. But after we got through with it, I thought, man, this is... This is just lends itself to an older guy, uh, and I know I know that part. <laughs> <laughs> Experience. And then the younger guy uh, to do it together, and Jamie agreed to do it, and uh, and we did. I'm I'm really proud of it. You know, to me, listening to the track, Bill, uh, yours and Jamie's voice are very complimentary. You know, it just really works well together. Because I mean, you you know, you've got that solid voice, and and Jamie has his sound. It's just a wow. Well, Jamie's the one with the solid voice. Uh, <laughs> you, you know, I've always thought that the best duets were when the voices were really opposite almost right. to each other. I mean, you look at, at Porter and Dolly. Mm -hmm. You know, I, Porter had what I call a horizontal voice, and Dolly had a vertical voice. Right. Jan Howard and I had that kind of blend. And you go back to... Uh, uh, Kitty Wells and Red Foley even yeah. back then. Uh, the contrast in the voices is what works and and uh, Jamie Johnson and I certainly have that contrast. Well I'll tell you what, listening to the whole album I, I really love Anderson and like I said it's going to come out this Friday and everything but I want to make mention recently I saw you at the uh, Grand Ole Opry doing your deal out there and, and you don't look your age and I mean you've had hits <laughs> you know country music hits in seven, di seven different decades and, and you go back to uh, City Lights that came out when you were 19, you know, uh, with, with Ray Price and then Mickey Gilley. Mm -hmm. And it, it's just amazing that you keep doing this, Bill. And I'm telling you what, when you're out on stage and you're talking to a sold out crowd like you were, it, it's like you're, you know, it's like you're in your 40s or something. Well, that's the way I feel. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't feel twice that old. I, um, I found a thing when I was, uh, when I was first getting into business, I found a little thing in a newspaper and I clipped it out. It said, find something you like doing so much, you'll do it for nothing. And then learn to do it well enough that they'll pay you. Right. And you've got it made. <laughs> and, and that's kind of been my uh, mantra throughout my life. It's been, you know, I love what I do. Right. And, and if I could afford to do it for nothing, I mean, if the guy at the filling station would give me my gas for nothing <laughs> and give me a loaf of bread at the grocery store for nothing, I'd sing for nothing. Right. And... Um, I love what I do, and I feel like I'm so blessed to be able to do it. And, and when I walk out on the stage, and, and especially at the Opry, because I've been there for so long, uh, it, it's, it's new all over again. Right. It, it's, it's fresh, and, and I feel so fortunate to be able to uh, do something that, that I love so much and make a living. Well, you know, and, and you also, Bill, have helped... Uh, other artists through the years, such as Connie Stevens and Lefty and a lot Connie of these... Connie Smith. Connie Smith, thank you. Connie Stevens didn't need my help. <laughs> <laughs> you might Neither have helped her too. Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you've helped so many uh, incredible <laughs> artists that have become icons in country music, uh, you know, through your songwriting even. So an incredible performer, you know, you're an, you're an author. 
but also, you know, the songs that you provided, every time I hear Whiskey Lullaby, I think about you, because I knew that you co-wrote it, you know. Yeah, John Randall and I wrote that together, and uh, I love writing with and uh, working with the, the young people, the young writers, the new artists. I've probably introduced more new artists on stage at the Opry probably than anybody. And it's fun to kind of stand back and watch them and then you, you'll, uh, you'll see them again maybe another month later and they'll have had a hit and then pretty soon they're up here and then pretty soon they're bigger artists than you are. You know, I introduced, <laughs> I introduced Carrie Underwood the first night she really? was on the Opry. And you know what, it amazes me watching you and Jeannie too, how you're able to remember all these details about the artist. You know, they come out and you're doing all these introductions and you have special information and details. You're going around, you know, shaking hands and taking pictures with people. How do you remember it all? I don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> trying to think who the artist was and I got his name totally wrong about a year ago. I, just, I screwed up the whole introduction. <laughs> when it was over, I said, man, all I can do is just apologize to you, you know. Well, you know, I remember the first time I was uh, at the opera years ago and uh, I can't remember who it was, but they were introducing Kenny Chesney. And so, and it was when Kenny was a brand new artist. And so I'd like to invite up little Jimmy Chesney. <laughs> and so Kenny, and Kenny leans in and goes, it's, it's Kenny. Oh, I'm sorry, Kenny. And, well, you, and you didn't know if it was planned or not, but you know, maybe it's not. Well, you know, the Opry is not scripted. I mean, I remember the night that uh, Grandpa Jones introduced Martina as Matilda, Matilda McBride. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! And the night that Grandpa Jones couldn't remember uh, Jim and Jesse, and he said, "Just bring them out here, him and him." <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's amazing! But you know, you you guys make it look so fluid on the on the Opry stage. Now, with this new album, Anderson, uh, and eleven tracks, are you going to be out on tour with this also? I don't know. We'll. We'll see how it, uh, if, if anybody wants to hear it, yeah. I think they will. Yeah, I've never quit working the road. I don't work it near as much as I used to. Right. I mean, I was, I was one of those road dogs for years out there, 250 days, 300 days a year. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's, I, I don't do more than about 30 or so road dates a year. If people want to hear it, I'll go out there and do it as long as I'm, you know, as long as I'm able to. Yeah. Now, and, how many and, Grand Ole Opry dates do you do a year? It varies. I try to do... I try to do a minimum of about five a month, wow. and that's including, you know, Tuesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Yeah. So if I do five or six a month, you know, at the end of the year, I've done 60 or 70 oh, yeah. nights at the Opry, and, uh, and, and, and I, like I say, I still enjoy it. it it's, it's still fun, and I feel fortunate to be able to do it. Right. Now, uh, I've heard a rumor that you may be starting on a new book also. You've already have... <laughs> Four published books. I started and, that rumor, and, and and I've enjoyed all of your books, and you know, and I own several of them. So, uh, so is there possibly a new book coming up? Well, somebody said to me the other day, and this made a lot of sense. I was telling some weird road story or some crazy thing that happened. And somebody said to me, said, you know, really, you really ought to write all of these things down. Mm -hmm. I did in the book I wrote back in '93 called I Hope You're Living as High on the Hog as the Pig You Turned Out to Be, where I told a bunch of road stories and all. But you know, so many of these things, I, I don't want them to get lost. No. Uh, I, I want the future generations, even if it's nobody but my grandkids, say, you know, oh, my papa did this or did that right. or this happened or something. Uh, like the other night, I was in a little pizza place and uh, I was sitting there waiting on a pizza to go and this guy was sitting at the next table and he said, hey, man, how you doing? Great, great to see you. I said, oh, thanks. Good to see you, too. And he said, let me buy you a beer. And I said, no. And he said, oh, come on. Let me buy you a beer. So I said, okay. So he brought a beer over to my <laughs> table. So the guy finishes eating. He's there with his wife or his girlfriend or something. And he, he goes to get up and he walks by my table and he sticks out. He says, man, this is so good to meet you. It's just, I'm, I'm such a fan. I've watched you for years. And thought, oh, thank you, thank you. And he walks on, he gets about halfway to the door, and I heard him turn to his wife and say, I can't wait to tell my friends I bought Ralph Emery a beer. <laughs> Now, you want that to get lost. I don't want no, that to get lost. No. So I may write another book. But you know, the title of the book would be I Bought Ralph Henry a Beer. <laughs> I love that. But you know, it, it's amazing though how many different, you know, eras of artists though, Bill, you've written songs for and with. I mean, such as Vince Gill and Brad Paisley, and then, you know, back in your early years as well. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, other than a short little break there in the 90s, you really haven't stopped the whole time. Well, I got kind of sidetracked. Actually, it was in the 80s uh, when I went out to California and started doing a lot of game shows. And oh, I've seen the videos. And stuff on yeah. television. But, uh, but I came back home. I mean, yeah. the music was, 
that, that's the bedrock. That's mm -hmm. what's underneath it all. And I can do all those other sidetrack things uh, as much as I want to, but, but coming back home to the music, coming back home to the opera, coming back home to songwriting, right. uh, that's, that, that's a magnet that well, will never lose its, uh, its pull on me. We're thankful you have. I wanted to bring up also to where you're going to be doing your TV show again on RFD TV, right? Yes, we're doing a new session of uh, Country's Family Reunion. Uh, the uh, uh, the latter part of this month, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna do something that I think you'll be interested in because each one of us who's been around a while, we're gonna bring like a young new artist with us. Oh wow! And kind of introduce this new artist, uh, you know, to our audience and stuff to try to you know expand the the base of it all. So Larry Black, bless his heart, he's uh, he's allowing us to do it one more time. We've wow. been doing it for twenty one years. Now. That is amazing. Yeah. You know, no TV shows or anything last that long anymore, Bill. That's no, they don't. Power. They don't. No, they don't. Yeah, if you get three or four seasons, you're lucky. Yeah. You've done better. <laughs> 21. Everybody wants to do 21. There we go. <laughs> Just like the hit single. Well, be sure and pick up a copy. It's going to be out this Friday. And I can tell you from listening to the album, Anderson, Whispering Bill Anderson's new album, it, it sounds incredible. He's got a lot of great friends on there, including Jamie Johnson. And uh, it, it's just so great to hear new music out of you, Bill. Thank you, Will. Uh, you know, nobody was standing over me making me do it. It was something I wanted to do and was able to work with uh, some talented people, Tom Utes and Peter Cooper, who kind of co-produced it. And uh, it, it's a labor of love. I hope somebody will like it. And uh, if they do, who knows, we may do another one. Well, and, and also, <laughs> if you're going to uh, Whisper and Bill Anderson's website, uh, be sure and order one of these sweatshirts or T-shirts that I almost bought the other day when I was on the <laughs> website. And you said you bought one just to see what they look like. Well, I wanted to see if the quality was any good. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. There we go. Yeah. Well, uh -huh. you can't beat that. Uh -huh. Whisper and Bill Anderson, the new uh -huh. album is Anderson, coming out this Friday. Thanks for watching The Rock Interview. Thanks. Musicians Institute Guitar Craft Program, sponsor of Fox 17 Rock and Review.